completing a Stuart Triple Expansion Engine Part 25, fitting a cast hand wheel to operate the reversing gear. As you can see by this clip the engine is partially assembled and given any excuse I will rotate the crankshaft and watch the pistons go up and down. These are incredibly free but everything's tight, which is a bit of a contradiction in terms, but thankfully that's the way it is. Even though I drilled four holes in it as per the drawing, I wasn't happy with this brass hand wheel. It just didn't look right. The machine steel hand wheel which is fitted to my other Stuart triple expansion engine, expertly built by a man called Ronnie Mall, looks far better than this one does. So I think it's going to have to go and in its place I'm going to fit a cast hand wheel. First of all I need to thread the end of this shaft to fit the hand wheel to it. And the first thing I need to do is make sure that I don't thread the part of the shaft that fits into the bearing block. I've marked this position with a felt tip pen so I don't do this. I threaded the end of the shaft using a 5BA die. And in this clip you can see that the thread is just the right length. After I finished threading this shaft I thought it would look really nice with a nut on the end like this one. Quite a while back I bought a bag full of these via eBay and the stainless steel. The only problem is they are metric. This is not a major problem, I just re-threaded it using a 5BA tap. I do like these manually operated tailstock chucks, they don't hold the drills or taps as tight as one with a key, but that is a good feature when you're tapping something, because as the tap hits the bottom of the hole, the entire tap rotates in the chuck. If it didn't, it would probably snap off, and that's not a good option. I tapped the hole using a taper tap first, and then I did it again using a plug tap to thread the nut to the bottom of the hole. What about the hand wheel? Well, here it is. I bought this casting from Blackgate's Engineering, and I think it's a steering wheel for a small traction engine, but it's just the right size for a reversing hand wheel on this engine. All I need to do is chop off this bit that sticks out of the side, and it will do the job just fine. The first thing I want to do though is drill a hole in the middle and thread it 5BA. It took me by surprise, this casting is quite hard. I used my Proxon motor tool and it took quite a while to get through the hole. It would have been better putting it in the lathe I think, but it's okay. Here I'm threading the hole with a 5BA tap. And I'm making sure that the thread is perfectly in line with the hole. And once again for the threading operation it would have been much better had it been in the lathe chuck with the tap in the tailstock. This is what it looked like after I fitted the nut, and I'm quite happy with the appearance. Well, apart from the bit sticking out of the side, which I quickly chopped off on the bandsaw. This is quite a good quality casting, but as it is a casting, as usual, it needs fettling. The initial clean-up starts off with some emery cloth, so I can get the feel of how hard the metal is. And here I'm selecting a suitable needle file to clean up the spokes. The half round needle file I think is the best tool for the job because it can be used for the rounded parts in the corners and also if I turn it round I can clean up the flat parts of the spokes in the middle. This is not a difficult job, it just seems to take a disproportionate length of time to complete. It's a bit like my shed painting. When I paint a shed or a large area using a paintbrush or a paint roller I generally do it wrong. I'll paint part of it, then I'll move on to another part of it, and then I fill in all the parts that aren't painted. But to get there in the end, and my paint jobs generally look okay. For the outer part of this wheel, I thought it would be a good idea to use a flapper wheel, which is fitted to the small Proxon motor tool that's mounted to the bench. After doing a bit of that, I went back to the filing job, because by rotating it around the flapper wheel, I could see the bits that I'd missed. I changed the flapper wheel for a wire brush and I'm using that on the spokes and around the edge and it gives just the finish that I want. I need this to still look like a casting but it needs to be quite well polished around the outside edge. I can still see one of the spokes looking quite rough and that needs more attention so it's just a process of elimination, I will get there eventually. I never did like model steam engine parts or my early girlfriends to look that rough. In this highly magnified image, you can see that it's getting better and better, but still needs some more attention from the needle file. I don't get this, from a distance this looks okay, but it still needs even more fettling. 
the finish is not good enough on one of the spokes and right in the corners by the handle. But if I do any more cleaning, I'm going to slip into a coma, never mind the viewers watching the video. So I'll move on to something much more exciting, fitting the shaft to the hand wheel, or fitting the hand wheel to the shaft, whichever way you look at it. The clearance between the shaft and the bearing that mounts onto one of the columns is critical. It wants to be neither tight nor slack. I mount the shaft of the hand wheel in my Myford lathe and just correct a bit of eccentricity. In no time at all, with some gentle persuasion, the wheel runs quite true. More than good enough for the application. And here is the application. I'm holding it in place on the engine where it's going to be. And when I compare it with the old hand wheel, I think it's a no contest. I fitted the drop arm to the other side of the engine to hold the hand wheel in the correct position. But I couldn't resist rotating the engine to watch the pistons go up and down. I really must stop doing this. So I'll stop right now so I don't wear out the engine before it's completed. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.